Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Marriott Hotel here, West Indian Key. Uh, two very big press conferences today. Um, I'm delighted to welcome two gold medal gold medalist Olympians um, to the hotel today. Firstly up to my left, James De Gale. Well, we're delighted to announce we'll face Marco Antonio Caravan um, at the Liverpool Echo Arena on November the 22nd, part of a huge card on Sky Sports box office. And we're delighted to welcome James today. To his left, obviously a man who's instrumental in James's development, someone who we've worked with a long time at Matrim, been involved with some great super middleweights over the years, of course, Ambrose Mendy. And to his right, someone who is potentially, or definitely even more instrumental in his development as someone who has guided him from an early stage in his career now to the, the point of almost challenging for a world title, Jim McDonald's trainer. Just want to talk briefly about the situation with James Vigal, and it's a very, very interesting one. One that's uh, taken four or five months since that final performance at Wembley Stadium when he beat Brandon Gonzalez to become the IBF managing manager for Carl Froch to this moment. And it's been a waiting game for James Vigal. Um, we know what he wants. He wants a shot at that world title. And he's earned that shot now. He's a mandatory challenger. It's not going anywhere. And now he waits patiently so far for a shot at Carl Froch. Um, personally, I believe that fight's going to happen. We have a little friendly bet game between everyone here at the table. Um, it's a fight I want to see. It's a fight I believe the British public wants to see. I know our broadcasters want to see as well. But I have to take my hat off to James Vigale and the team because he didn't want to wait around. And you know, my advice would probably take a much easier fight than Marco Antonio Perrigan. 20 and 2 Mexican, I think number 10 in the WBC rankings. You saw him lose a very tight decision to Sakio Bika for the WBC title. Obviously went there through with Badu Jack and then had J. Lee on love everywhere before losing a tight decision to him. So he's here to win. It's a very, very tough fight and James puts it all on the line. Um, that number one position in the IBF is up for grabs and Perriban's coming here to take that. He wants his shot to um, But James Legale wanted to make sure he made a real statement on November 22nd. And we feel that Marco Antonio Perriban is the perfect opponent to do so. So firstly, um, to talk a little bit about the fight itself and James' development. Jim? I'm going to put it to the point where it is. Um, yeah, basically, I think Eddie's given you the, the broad line of everything. First of all, with James, obviously you mandated the IBF title, and that's the title of the fight. Um, James is unlike anybody other, you know, in terms of what gets him out, what gets him out. He could have took a different fight than he just explained, but he gets to my he can make my boxing the best, and he wants to be the best. Um, all I can say, and I'm going to keep it short brief, is I watched him even yesterday, and just the difference in him since he's gone through the stuff with Gary and all that thing things brought him a few problems from probably the best part of six, seven months, eight months. And right now, the best of James and Gary is he's yet to come. I think he's coming to the world title level. So you can see the guy won the Olympic gold medal, which they don't give away, won it in Beijing. And the fact is, Look at James now, how round he is as a professional fighter, everything he's doing, the tempo he pops his out. I think right now you're looking at the best one on six, eight pound fighter in the world. And I hope the call for what happens, the British boxers, I think it'd be like great for everyone to tune in and watch. And I think people will also be like that because James is how he is, and it's even the form he puts in when he wins that world title. And uh, Ambrose, the form in my side, 28,000 calls a day, emails, harassment. Obviously, uh, you know, you, you wanted James to have a good fight on the 22nd. Yeah, he's got it. Indeed. And I might say this, I don't I have a problem with this side uh, because I have a job to do and it's pretty invisible around James. But, you know, my job is to ensure that, that James gets where he was destined to be in the shortest possible time. And uh, sometimes it is very, very frustrating. His levels of skill, you know, some of you in this room have no idea. You know, Anthony Joshua is going to come up here in a moment, and he will beat Lumento from where, where James is at. James DeGale, Jim said it, is the number one 168 guy in the world. When James becomes world champion, and oblivious to what Carl Frotch may say, think, or do, he is going to become world champion. The mandate then will be to Eddie, very simple, go and get the Andre Wards of this world, you know, bring George Groves out of his hibernation and, and, uh, and deluded self. 
because that's what James wants to do. He wants to give to the British public what they demand, what they want, great domestic fights. Whenever we reflect back, we look and know domestic fights mean everything. Las Vegas means asking everybody to get up, those who stay at home and watch boxing four or five o'clock in the morning. Who wants it when we can do it here? You know, the press conference following this is again about great domestic talent. So I might bore some people, I have a job to do. And my job is to convince everybody in here just how great James DeGale is. And believe you me, he is. He is the person who selected the opponent. You know, does Jim have any misgivings about it? No, because James' mindset is that he wants Cole Frost in a ring. Cole Frost is making every excuse, and I'm not going to be polite about it. He's a great fighter, probably the most financially successful super middleweight in their history of boxing worldwide. However, we've come to an abrupt halt with regards to James. Carl Frotch, listening, watching on that camera there, I'm not here to insult you, but what I am saying is, few tins of man up, mate. You know, you knew in May that James Miguel was your mandatory. And it's a word which has become quite well established, particularly in boxing circles, courtesy of George Grace. He said it and said it and said it. James is the mandatory for the IBF 168 title. Carl Frost is a tight player. He's been dancing around on some program he didn't even, he didn't even win. And now he's pontificating. He's thinking about it. Carl, great fighters, and I've been around some, don't pontificate. They get on and do it, especially when millions, millions of pounds are being guaranteed for the guy to fight. So James doesn't want me to, to harp on about Carl Frotch. I want to harp on about it because I know this guy, the pride of this country, went to Beijing, won an Olympic gold medal, came back British, European, you know, WBC silver, mandatory. James gave that up in order to become the mandatory to who he believed would be Carl Frotch. And that, that is at the back of the mind what he's going to do now, and he'll come to Germany, is whoever's in the way, he's getting them out of the way. This is a very, very tough season opponent, a very, very durable Mexican who has fought competitively for the 168 title WBC and he'll come here to win. He's not on two weeks notice, he's going to come here to win. James will be left to do what he does and he'll do it very well. So I'm going to pack up what I've got to say. That's just, a little, that, that's just a little taster of the daily conversations we remember and then they're very passionate. And uh, we've enjoyed the journey so far and, and looking forward to the rest of it, Ambrose. James, obviously, you know, we know your feelings about Carl Frost, you want that fight badly. But now, November the 22nd, Liverpool Echo Arena plays you box level, Marco Antonio Perriman, arguably the toughest fight of your career. One hundred percent. This is like a, a second and final eliminator, really, because if I don't beat him, I don't box the world title. So uh, yeah, this is like a number final eliminate for me, but it's a, it's a good, good test. Uh, Mark uh, Perryman's, his last two fights has come off two losses, but against good quality opposition. He lost points to Zeko Vinka, which was close to much in it, and he lost to Leon Love uh, on points again. But he had Leon Love all over the place in the fifth round. He should have really took him out. But uh, it's a good season, season growth. Uh, Tough Mexican, he's not a typical Mexican, he can box as well, he can box in the back of the boat, but uh, it's going to come to fight, and uh, I think he really is going to bring the best out of me. And uh, I'm looking forward to it, it's on a great show. Uh, and yeah, roll on the 22nd. Roll on the 22nd. And obviously, you've got your reservations about if Rotch will fight you, but you know, we, we said to you, you know, before the fight, if you take the fight on the 22nd of November, the fight with Rotch. If it happens, will be January the 31st of the other two. Are you okay with that? Will you be ready? And the answer was, yeah. I said, yeah. Uh, I said to Eddie, Eddie, Eddie actually said to me, why don't you box in just the eight or ten, just keep busy, but I told him, no, I don't want that. I want someone that when I beat, I'm going to get the credit for. And we had a little list, and Kerry Brown was the one, and uh, I think this is a real good test for me, a real good test. And if I beat him in style, which I will do, uh, I think it sets up a massive showdown with me and Carl Frost.
But uh, as I said in previous interviews, it's not about me boxing Carl Crouch. Please believe me. It's about me just getting my chance, my shot at a world title and becoming the first British Olympic gold medalist to win a world title. Making history, and that's what it's about. Thank you, James. And before we break for one on one, just, just to clarify the timings issue with the IVF at the moment. Carl Froch or James DeGale cannot box after December the 31st. Uh, that's the, the cut-off date. If Carl Froch wanted to box after, he has to ask, uh, put in a petition for an exception, which James can challenge as well. Um, so he knows that on the 31st of December, he will receive a letter from the IBF to say, now you must start negotiations with James DeGale for the title. So we know that Carl has never been a fan of vacating titles. Again, it's a fight that I think the British public want, and I'd like to see happen in the early part of 2015. And uh, I know that Carl particularly is excited about the Gale Perryman fight and wants James to go out and, and really make some noise. So, November the 22nd, some huge fights on the card already, some huge fights to be announced on that Tony Bell you've been Nathan Cleverly card at Echo Arena, and we look forward to seeing you there. We're going to have a break for five or ten minutes for one on one with James to go, and then we'll bring in the next press conference. Thank you.